Pretty jewelry, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages, coming up next on Pros and Cons by Piercer, episode number 81. So please stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to a level of expertise as somebody who's been in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. What we're gonna talk about today is threaded jewelry. Jewelry that threads on the ends thread onto the post. There are two primary styles that we're gonna talk about and that are out there. There's externally threaded, which means that the threading is on the post and a ball kind of screws onto it like a nut. And then there's internally threaded, which has a piece of uh, threading that comes off the post or comes off the end and threads into the post, um, kind of like a screw. Of course, Internally threaded jewelry is your best option for a number of reasons, including you can usually, it takes more turns to tighten and loosen. Um, the other thing is, is that you don't have threading rubbing against the piercing every time you change the jewelry. The last one being, or the next one being, uh, that you can usually get it more secure, more tight without having to worry about it stripping off and it takes more turns to tighten and loosen. So whenever offered uh, one way or the other, or if you can find it, always go with internally threaded jewelry. That's my suggestion. So now let's get into the pros and cons. I'm gonna give you five advantages, five disadvantages, starting with the pros. Pro number one, this jewelry tends to be easier to remove and replace than other types of jewelry, especially rings like catty rings, seamless rings, and beaded rings. There doesn't involve any bending or applying pressure or doing any of that. If you can loosen up the end, you can unscrew it and remove it. Uh, putting them back in, and I'll get into that a little bit later, can sometimes be a little frustrating to get started, but it's fairly easy and straightforward. Um, the other thing is, is usually because you're dealing with types of jewelry that have a large gap that's easily to insert into areas, you're not having to bend jewelry or expand or bend or rotate or corkscrew to get the jewelry in and out. Number two, uh, these have a lower profile. A lot of cases when we're doing piercings, uh, if we were going to do of a ring, it would have to be oversized to allow... Uh, the area to be as flat as possible, or it needs to wrap around something. So we end up having this large circular thing sitting out there. With uh, threaded jewelry like uh, Lebray's bar standard barbells, curved barbells, you can put a piece of jewelry in an area uh, and pierce with it and have a much lower profile. Lower profile means instead of having these this big giant ring wrapping around the area, uh, to make it fit into this area or what have you, you have this really basically just two balls on both ends. So it'll, or one ball. So it allows us to pierce areas where we would have had to use larger rings with a piece of jewelry that's not gonna have as much contact and not as much weight and not as much movement, which is all good for the healing process. Number three, there's a large variety of different types of ends. Uh, gemmed ends, shaped ends, all kinds of fancy dancy stuff for you to choose from. Um, with rings, you're kind of stuck with rings. Uh, you might be able to get a little different colored ball on there occasionally, but for the most part, there's not much spectacular. With threaded jewelry, there's a lot of different options out there. Sizes, shapes, colors, materials, etc., that you can get. Number four, there are different styles. Uh, you're not just stuck with a circle. You can get standard, which is straight. Curved, which is kind of a, a quarter turn. Uh, circular and Lebre studs. Also, there's J-bars, which work really well in navels. If the, your shape is a little different than your average person, kind of helps it stick out and stand out a little bit more. Um, there's also specialty jewelry like surface-to-surface uh, -surface barbells and et cetera. So it has a lot more variety of shapes to deal with different parts of the anatomy and fit more into the body. Number five, very secure and durable. Jewelry um, of good quality can be worn in the body for a long period of time. Uh, barbells that barbells of any type or posts 
Um, threaded jewelry usually can be put in the body and left in there for a long period of time without any type of issues. There's a few things and I'll talk about those when we get into the pros, but for the most part, you can put them in and leave them in indefinitely. And because they're threaded and because you can control how tight that ball is on there, they are going to stay there and be secure. Now with the pros out of the way, let's move on to the cons. The first con is those balls can have been screwed. The ends, because they're threaded and they rub against clothing, bedding, et cetera, other body parts, they can slowly begin or can loosen up from time to time. You do need to check them occasionally just to make sure they're secure. Um, nothing sucks more than losing an end. Um, it generally happens, it seems at the worst time, and they tend to roll or land in the nastiest thing near you. Number two, there's a, there can be a slight gap, though micro in most cases, between where that ball connects or in connects in the end of the post. So uh, that can sometimes ham, uh, create an area for contaminants to kind of collect in or dirt, debris, etc. Usually this isn't an issue during the healing process. It's more of a thing if it comes in contact, especially if it's a piercing in an area of the body that gets a lot of contact with bodily fluids, things will kind of start to collect in there. Also, um, the oils that your body produces and dead skin cells and et cetera can collect in there. Hey, it's kind of nasty. So that's part of the maintenance part of having threaded jewelry is occasionally you do need to take them out. You do need to clean them. Uh, just uh, cause in some cases they can kind of stink a little bit be kind of gross. So that's one disadvantage. Number three, and this only comes with externally threaded jewelry. Well, especially uh, you can damage any piercing if you don't insert the jewelry correctly, but with uh, threaded jewelry, we have this rough threading at the end and inserting that into a fresh piercing or even a healed piercing can cause damage to the piercing, including uh, disrupting or tearing away or blowing out the piercing, so to speak. Uh, you, it is always best to go with internally threaded for that reason, because there's not all that roughness. Number four, these can be very difficult to start sometime, especially if you're working with really, really small ends. Um, some of those millimeter or half millimeter, really tiny things that people like to put in ears, they can be kind of a pain in the ass to get started initially. Uh, this goes for external or internally threaded. Um, they can really weigh on your patients. And I know it kind of goes against the pro of being easy to change. Uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes these will require you to have some type of tool or some form of assistance to get in, get that ball started. And the last con, number five, they are more expensive than rings and other types of jewelry. Because there's more manufacturing involved, uh, in some cases, four or five different parts, um, usually these can be twice the price of rings and other types of jewelry. Uh, so threaded is going to be more expensive for that reason. With that all out of the way, let's go with kind of living with this type of jewelry, some things that you're going to, uh, that you're going to encounter by having, wearing this for a long period of time. The first thing is, is of course, I've mentioned this before, it, the tightness of the balls is always an issue, regardless how long the jewelry has been in there. You do want to tighten them or check them on a regular basis to make sure they're secure. Some people will suggest you using Loctite and et cetera. I don't advise using that stuff. It tends to create a situation where even more contaminants can get in there. Uh, people can have reactions to Loctite. The other problem is you don't want it on there so tight that if you end up in the emergency room or you have a medical emergency or something else happens where you have to remove the jewelry that you can't get it off on your own without tools. Uh, they can be worn for a long period of time. They tend to be very secure, um, easy to remove and change, but also you can leave them in and as long as you're checking that's, uh, how tight the ball's on, you can wear them for years. The other thing is, is as I mentioned before, they should be cleaned on a regular basis or from time to time. Of course, for your daily day, uh, day to day type stuff, I usually suggest cleaning with warm water and soap while you're in the shower with the piercing or with the jewelry in the piercing. Um, if it's an area of the body where uh, it comes in contact with a lot of bodily fluids or it begins to have kind of an odor or something looks gross on there. Basically for oral piercings, I generally suggest uh, you can soak it in a uh, denture cleaner. Uh, or use a little bit of toothbrush or toothpaste. Use a toothbrush to kind of scrub it up. With other areas, um, usually just using um, a mild antibacterial soap 
and a, a toothbrush is going to be fine. The only thing I would advise is uh, don't use your own toothbrush. Uh, use your uh, roommates or, you know, one that you only use for cleaning your piercings, jewelry. Well, that's it. That's all I have to say about this subject today. Um, hope you learned something. Hope you found it edifying. If you did so, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, let us know that you like it because we like it when you like it. If I brought up a question or you have any additional questions or anything to add, please leave a comment. I usually answer them if I have time. I'm a little bit behind right now, but I'm slowly catching up. If you like swag, you like t-shirts, you like uh, phone cases, that sort of stuff, and you're a fan of body art, check out our merch store, especially if you're a fan of the channel. Very different designs, probably about 12 different colors, different things you can get. There's probably 100 different types of items that you can get on there. Uh, link is in the description. There's also one of those merch bars below. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercing skill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, hope to see for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay clean, and pick up after yourself. Because we all know that. Don't go there. That's not where that goes. Till next time.